everybody has problems. Everybody has problems. Including me, including you, including your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your grandma. And I know you have a mom or a dad. I know you have a grandma and grandpa. Otherwise, you wouldn't be alive. You might not know who they are. You might not see them. You might not have a great relationship with them. But you definitely have a mom and a dad and a grandma and a grandpa. And a great-grandpa and a great-grandma and a great-great-grandpa and a great-great-grandma. And it's going to go all the way down for millions and millions of years. You have millions and millions and millions of years worth of great, great, XXX, 10 grandparents and grandmas. It's crazy. The amount of people that have had to meet one another, find each other physically attractive enough to at least make out, or I mean, at least make love to produce another offspring, and then to have that offspring survive long enough to meet someone else attractive enough in their eyes to make love with all the way down the line to you, has been an insane amount of people, millions of people. You've probably had millions of grandparents. It's crazy, man, and it's all led up to you right now. So, if you're thinking about having a kid, just think, you know, it's just one more, one more time you gotta meet someone, and one more time you gotta raise that child so that they're old enough to uh, have another child, if you wanna do that, I don't know. But, it's just something to think about. There's been millions of people who, couples in your history that you probably don't even know about. You definitely don't know about, all right? I don't know why I'm talking about that because that's not what this video is about, but it was a very fascinating topic as it came up in my mind. But let's get back on the topic, shall we? Problems. Everybody has problems. I have problems. You have problems. Everyone has problems. And they range from big to small problems. Like today, I was driving to the gym. I forgot my gym pass. Small problem. Got to the gym, I wanted to do squats, somebody was on the squat rack. Small problem. My friend wanted to do bench press, I was already sore from bench press yesterday, but he really wanted to do bench press. I was like, alright, I'll do it anyway. That's a small problem. All right. There are big problems in my life as well, which I don't want to go into on this video right now, but I do have some big problems in my life. I do have some big problems in my life. If you haven't realized, I'm still in Canada right now. And I really wanted to be in Hawaii, but I'm not in Hawaii right now because of a big problem. But that's okay because problems are like steps. They're like stairs. So a staircase looks like this. It, it's flat and it goes up and it's flat and it goes up and it goes flat and it goes up and it goes flat. Now, that up part is like the problem. So you're going on a long life and then boom, a problem comes. And you're like, oh my God, it's a problem. Oh my God, it's a problem. And you might freak out or you might immediately respond. You might just like, okay, there's a problem. I'll size it up and I'm going to figure out how to uh, take, this, take on this problem. So you may take a step back and you up, you get on the next step. And then you're up, you're up a level. The reason I'm looking over there is because that's where the screen thing is. So forgive my eyes. But problems are like steps, staircases. The more problems you have, the more problems you overcome, I should say, the higher up you're going to go on the, on the ladder of life. Bigger, more successful people have much bigger problems. They're usually high quality problems, but they're problems nonetheless. Right? So it's like it's a high quality problem to not know which mansion you want to buy. It's a high quality problem to have so many emails coming in that you simply cannot respond to them all. It's a high quality problem to sell out of all the product that you have. There are all sorts of problems in life. And some problems are big, some problems are small, but just realize everyone has them, all right? So don't think you're unique. Don't think you're the only victim on this planet because you have a little problem. And whenever you tell someone about their prob your problem, they may act like they care, and probably the only person in the world who actually does care is your mom or dad. Probably your mom, maybe your dad, though. Um, everyone else is kind of like, shit, like, find a solution ASAP. You want help finding the solution? And I know, like... Some people aren't really solution orientated. They're just more like, they just want to like talk about their problems and then like hopefully a solution comes along. But the, the, the quicker you can turn your brain on to being solution orientated, the quicker you're going to take steps up this ladder. Or it's take steps up the staircase to get a higher vantage point on the beautiful life that you actually live. We are all living beautiful lives. If, if we can just see it that way, then it'll be that way. It's really that simple. Life is the way you see it. If you see life as dull and miserable, it's going to be dull and miserable, I promise. If you see life to be one exciting, big, mysterious adventure, it's going to be one big, exciting, mysterious adventure. If you see it as the greatest miracle ever, it 
instantly becomes the greatest miracle ever. You are watching me from wherever you're located right now, somewhere very, very far away. Very far away. If I screamed to the top of my lungs right now as loud as I possibly could, you wouldn't be able to even hear me. If this camera was shut off, the only reason you're able to hear me or see me right now is because of this amazing technology that we have that was created by the amazing human beings that had amazing minds and you've got to realize that we came out of the rocks, rivers, and trees. That's all we had. We were naked and we were in rocks, rivers, and trees, surrounded by rocks, rivers, and trees, and some other plants and animals. And we created technology like this. We created planes, we created spaceships, we created internet, we created telephones, we created socks, all sorts of things we created. From rocks, rivers, and trees, that's all we had. So imagine being naked in nature, and someone's like, hey, I'm going to create a camera that's going to allow me to uh, record myself, a video of myself, and then play it back. And not only play it back so you can watch what I just did, but play it back, watch what I just did, and then send it off to millions of people by pressing a button. How realistic is that? When you're naked in nature. That's all you've got around you is rocks, rivers, and trees. Humans are incredible beings, man. Humans are incredible. With our minds, we can create anything. Whatever our mind can conceive and believe, we can achieve. Just got to hold the focus long enough, imagine it clear enough, and then, you know, ex express that vision to others enthusiastically so that they can get on board and help out as well. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Life being however we perceive it to be. That's life. It's however we perceive it to be. So, we all have problems, and if you've got a problem right now, I would allow, I would say, I would encourage you, I'd invite you to, to be curious about how it's making you feel. Is it making you feel anxious? Is it making you feel angry? Is it making you feel sad? Is it making you feel deflated or heartbroken? Is it making you feel curious? How is this problem making you feel? Is it making you feel relieved? Maybe it's making you feel relieved. Maybe you were planning on taking a trip somewhere, but you didn't really want to go to the trip, and then for some reason, um, work called in and said, you, you have to come into work, you can't go on that trip anymore. Like, You'd be like, oh my god, that's a problem, I can't go on the trip. But really, you're like, I'm relieved, I don't really want to go on the trip after all. So how do, you, how do you feel with each problem that comes up? Just be aware, have that self-awareness about how you feel at all times. Not just when problems come up, but especially when problems come up. Self-awareness is hugely important. Always be in tune with how you're feeling. Very, very important because if, when you're in tune with how you feel, then you know if you're off track or not. As soon as you're off track, you can be like, hey, I'm a bit off track, I'm not feeling my best, I'm gonna do a few things that I know are guaranteed to put me back on track. I'm not feeling the greatest right now, so I'm gonna meditate. I'm gonna get early to bed, I'm gonna get to, early, I'm gonna get to bed early tonight. I'm gonna eat raw food today. I'm gonna eat raw food for the next week. I'm gonna clear up my diet and things are gonna be better. I'm gonna start going to the gym. I'm gonna call up my best friend and tell, him, tell her, tell them how much I love them. There's certain things that we can do that guarantee to get back on track, but we're only really going to get want, want to get back on track or be able to get back on track consciously if we're aware that we're off track in the first place. So be in tune with how you're feeling. That is really, really important, guys, if you're wanting to live an amazing life full of beautiful emotions. And I really think when you're on your deathbed, you're going to look back on your life and you're going to see your life in terms of emotion, in terms of your primary emotion. So if you went through your life dull and miserable, you're going to look back and say, wow, that was a really dull and miserable life. If you went through your life with the primary emotion being like passion and excitement, you're going to look back and say, wow, I had a very passion, passionate and exciting time here on planet Earth. That was great. I'm excited for what's next. There are some people who fear death. There are some people who fear the afterlife. And there are others who are excited for it. There are others who are, who are you know, they're, they're fascinated about it. They're curious about it. They're, they wonder what's next. They have this yearning to learn what's next after this physical experience and that's all about our perception it's all about our perception and one more thing about problems guys is that there's always a solution but I mean look where you're you're here right now okay you're here right now and you're probably at least average person here watching this video is between age like 24 and 34 years old so you've had at least 20 years of problems in your life and you've overcome every single one of them to get to this point right now to be relaxed enough to be watching a YouTube video bringing 10 minutes into the YouTube video. Nobody's killed you yet. The roof hasn't caved down on you. You're not, you haven't starved to death. 
And imagine, remember all the times when you thought, oh my god, maybe I'm going to get killed today, maybe I'm going to die today, or oh, die right now, or whatever, or maybe I'm not going to have enough food to, to eat, or maybe I'm not going to get out of this one, or whatever it is. Like, you've overcome so many problems. You might think, oh my god, I'm never going to get over this heartbreak, or I'm never going to get over the fact that he or she lied to me or stole that from me, or whatever, or I'm never going to get out of jail, or whatever the case may be. But you're here right now, and you've overcome all those problems. So every problem has a solution. And I think the fastest way of finding a solution is by putting your body and mind in a relaxed state. Just relax and let the problem come to you. Be, and instead of dwelling in the problem for more than a few minutes, instead of dwelling and thinking like, oh, this sucks, and just thinking how much it sucks. Yeah, it sucks, but there is a solution, and the solution doesn't suck. The solution's awesome. So just revel in how great it's going to be once you find the solution. And you can find the solution quickly by, like I said, relaxing. You can meditate, you can take naps, you can <coughs> write stuff out on paper, brainstorm a bit, talk with people, get different people's opinions, and just write a list of pros and cons for these different solution ideas that you have for whatever problem you're going through. Uh, there's, there's always a solution, all right? Just know that. And instead of telling people about your problem, tell people about the solution that you're thinking of. That's really key, too. Instead of dragging other people down and say, hey, this is what's happening to me right now, or this is what happened to me, say, hey, um, so this just happened, but so what I'm thinking is X, Y, and Z. What do you think? X, Y, or Z. And just get other people's input, get other people's ideas. Mastermind, really key. Now, the next thing I want to mention is something a bit about the afterlife. It's death. Death, death, death. We're all going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die, so it doesn't matter what you do on this planet. Only thing that matters is how you feel. And I say the only reason it matter. I say the only thing that matters is how you feel. I say that because that's what you've got to live with. That's what you got to live with. That's what you've got to feel on an ongoing basis. If you're feeling good on an ongoing basis, holy shiza! Everything's good when you're feeling good. You know that. When you're feeling good, everything's good. It doesn't matter if the weather is shit. You're feeling good. That's all that's good. You're feeling good. And when you're feeling crap, everything's crap, even if the weather's great. So you've got to prioritize good emotions, good vibes. And don't expect them to come to you. Don't expect other people to give them to you. Don't expect other people to make you feel good. You've got to learn to elicit them yourself. And you can. You can elicit good emotions. You can elicit good vibes. You can, you can emanate high, vibration, high vibrational frequencies. The easiest way to do it is by getting into a state of gratitude, by appreciating little things. By appreciating little things. You can start by going around the room and everything that's in sight right now, give thanks. Give th I'm giving thanks to that little screw right there. I'm giving thanks to the, the blinds. I'm giving thanks to the, the little plants out there. I'm giving thanks to the little butterfly ornament right there, giving thanks to my tripod right there, giving thanks to this camera, give thanks to my jacket, give thanks to my iPhone, give thanks to my shoes, give thanks to my t-shirt. Like, there's so many things around you right now that you can be grateful for. And it feels so good to be grateful. It feels so good to appreciate little things. And when you practice appreciating little things, life is just, ah, easy. It's, it's a lot easier to go through life when you're appreciating things. And if you're not appreciating things and then you die, ooh, dude, that, that's rough, that's dark. You didn't appreciate it while you were here and now it's gone. Damn, bro. Or you're on your deathbed and only once you're on your deathbed you start appreciating life. Right, you ever notice that? Like in the last day of school or something? Like, what's oh, the last day of school? Oh, I'm actually going to kind of miss that teacher. I'm actually going to kind of miss that bully or that girl who made fun of me or that guy who scared me or whatever. Like, I'm actually going to kind of miss this place. They say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Most people don't appreciate things unless, until it's taken away from them. But you don't need to wait till you're on your deathbed to start appreciating things. You can start appreciating things now. You can start reaping the rewards of gratitude now. And you might as well because, like I said, you're going to die anyway. So nothing you do here in life is permanent for you. Nothing you do here in life is permanent. Like these YouTube videos, who really cares? I'm going to die anyway. I... Who cares? I'm not doing these YouTube videos to for some big grand purpose. I'm just making them because they feel good in the moment for me. And hopefully you watching them, they feel good for you as well.
but realize everything you do, just make sure it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, fuck it off. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Or at least find a way of making it feel good. So if, let's say, you, uh, you hate mowing the lawn, but your parents say you got to mow the lawn. In fact, it's part of your allowance or whatever it is. You got to mow the lawn. You, let's say you just got to do it. You can't just quit your job. So instead of going through the, mowing the lawn in a way that you hate, maybe as you're mowing the lawn, every step you take, you're like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you just start practicing gratitude in the workplace. And that can feel good. Or maybe you can just take an audiobook and put an audiobook in your ears and put your headphones on, your earplugs, whatever, your soundproof thing so your ears don't die as you're mowing the lawn. And you listen to audiobooks as you're mowing the lawn. That's a great way of, of mowing the lawn and getting smarter and becoming more intelligent and becoming wiser and feeling better because it's keeping your focus on track of something positive. So if there's something that you have to do but you don't want to, find a way of doing it in a way that you want to do. But just, like I said, prioritize good emotions. Prioritize good vibes because that's all you've got. All you've got is your emotions. And, and really appreciate the people around you. Really appreciate the people around you. Appreciate your friends. Appreciate your family. Because when you're in your deathbed, you're not going to be on your deathbed thinking like, all right, I'm about to die in, a, in any day now. Really. I'm about to die. And I, I really wish I got, those, I, got those, uh, I, I got that orange Ferrari instead of the blue Ferrari. I really wish I got the, the, the king-size bed instead of the queen-size mattress bed. I really wish I got that, ma that mansion in California instead of the mansion in Colorado. You're not going to be thinking of your possessions, your belongings like that. You're going to be thinking of the ones closest to you. You're going to be thinking of the ones who are there with you, your best friends growing up. You're gonna miss your best friends growing up, man. You're gonna, you're gonna miss seeing, you know, maybe your daughter, your granddaughter grow up. Like you're gonna care about the people in your life when you're on your deathbed. Everyone does. Everyone on their deathbed, they get interviewed. They've, they've done studies. People on their deathbed, they interview them. The results come in all the same. The thing, the number one most important thing, is the people closest to them. It's your relationships. The quality of your life is really. I mean, the quality of your relationships can be reflected in the quality of your life. If you've got great relationships, you probably have a great life. If your relationships suck, your life sucks. And if you've got shitty ass relationships, it's probably because your mood is shitty. Nobody wants to be in a good relationship with... No one can be in a good relationship with someone who's not always in a really shitty mood. So, if you're the type of person who's like always blaming other people for the way you feel, you say, like, oh, he's so annoying, or she's so annoying, or it's so hard to get along with so-and-so, and it's so hard to get along with so-and-so as well... If you're constantly blaming other people, you gotta you gotta check check yourself out. Maybe you need to develop more patience. Maybe you need to be the one to develop more understanding. Yeah? First seek to understand, then to be understood. So if you're having a difficult time with relationships, yeah, realize that man, you gotta you gotta prioritize your good vibes, your good emotions. Cause if you are having a hard time with someone, but you you you, you see them, let's say tomorrow, and you're in a really good mood. They're gonna pick up on that, and they're gonna want to. They're gonna want to try and match that 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 vibe a bit. So always hold strong to your good vibes, and you can bring people up like that. But never sink down to match someone else's vibe. It's easier said than done for sure. But with awareness and with intention and with practice, you can do it. You can do it. So that's the video, guys. I just wanted to mention that we all have problems. I've got problems. My life is not totally perfect all the time, although I wish it was, and I think it can be closer to having no problems by cultivating beautiful states of mind. I think when you have a beautiful state of mind, life is beautiful. Even if a problem arises, you, you, you've you already cultivated that beautiful state of mind, you can see the problem as a beautiful thing, and you can just, instead of making such a sharp, like, uh, 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 you can just ride it up, ride it up, ride it up, and you can make it through life a lot more beautifully. And the second thing is that you're going to die, so don't be so attached to little things. Don't worry about the $30 fee that someone charged you. Don't worry about the fact that you lost your iPhone. Don't worry about the fact that somebody keyed your car. Don't sweat the small stuff, bruh. Don't sweat the small stuff. You're going to die, man. You're going to die. And that's a beautiful thing. That's not a morbid thing. Dying, holy smokes, man. Dying's gonna be beautiful. Dying's gonna be great. We can get rid of this physical shell. Uh -huh. And then we, if we get re reincarnated, then whoa, we start fresh. Start looking off a little cute baby. All right, and hopefully we retain some of this information that we're uh, learning here in these 
videos or self-improvement books or whatever. And, and yeah, let's just finish off this video by saying that I'm a huge proponent for self-development, for self-improvement. If you walk into your local library, you will find an entire section dedicated to self-improvement, self-development. I would encourage you to take out a bunch of books, bring them home, or don't even bring them home, just stay in the library and flip through and read them. I think it's much easier to focus in the library than back home. So go to your library next time after you go to the gym or something, just to, you know, get in a good state with physically with the, the body, and then go to the library and take out some books. And just read up on, on some Napoleon Hill, on some Bob Proctor, on some Brian Tracy, on some Darren Hardy, on some Lisa Nichols, um, on some Earl Nightingale, on some, uh, on some Tony Robbins. There's a lot of good content in the library, man. A ton of good content. And it's just waiting for you. It's waiting for you right now. It's all there. Check out some Jim Rohn content as well, man. These these people, man, they've 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 distilled down a many many years of wisdom just for you and me to to take and, and use if we wish, as we wish, when we wish. And uh, damn, does it feel good to to be a little wiser? You know, you look back on your life five years from now, hopefully, and you'll think, wow, I'm so much wiser now. Instead of thinking, but looking back five years from now, thinking, wow, well, I haven't really learned much in five years. Don't let that be you. You can learn so much from listening to audiobooks and from reading self-improvement books. You learn so, so much. And they're all there for you in your local library. If you want a list of the top books that I recommend, you can check the link in the description. I'll be sure to post that up right here. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. Much love from British Columbia, Canada. Oh, I should have turned the ISO down, huh? Got a little, got a little bright. That's too dark. Whatever. Peace out.